الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم جعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما إنك ولي ذلك والقادر عليه أما بعد يقول الحق تبارك وتعالى ومن يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم إلا من سفه نفسه ولقد اصطفيناه في الدنيا وإنه في الآخرة لمن الصالحين And whoever seeks a path aside from the path and the milla of Ibrahim alayhi salam except one who practices safaha and the word safiha or safaha means one who has a weak opinion who does not know what's good for them. In other words, if we to say so and so is safih in matters that are worldly, then this person doesn't really know from a worldly perspective what's good for them. And this is a lower form of safaha. The greater form of safaha is for one to deviate from the milla of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is the milla of Tawheed. As we spoke about Ibrahim alayhi salam, repeatedly he was the icon, if you will, of the pure monotheistic religion. He was the imam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put him through many tests and tribulations in order to test him and train him to be an imam for the Muslims. So this is the greater form of safaha that one would deviate from the billah of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. وَلَقَدْ اسْطَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him in this dunya to be the imam for the muttaqeen. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ In the hereafter indeed he is a man, he is a person who is going to occupy the highest levels of paradise. He is going to be among the elite of the elite, among the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhim afdalu salati wa salam id qala lahu rabbuhu aslim qala aslamtu li rabbil alameen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to embrace Islam and again when we talk about Islam who is the leader of the righteous we say Ibrahim alayhi salam was the icon of Islam and he was a Muslim as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exonerated him in other ayat as the Israelites attempted to say that he was a Jew or he was a Christian. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exonerated him by saying, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ That Ibrahim alayhi salam was neither a Jew nor a Christian. He was a Hanifi means he deviated and declared his innocence in terms of words and practice from anything to do with shirk. وَالْعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Further affirmation that Ibrahim السلام, did not practice shirk in any shape or form, did not affiliate himself with the mushriks in any shape or form. قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And Islam as we know is to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To submit to him in infinite acts of obedience. And to love him and honor him and believe in him without any doubt whatsoever and to submit to his will voluntarily to submit to his will voluntarily because all of his creation are under his control involuntarily so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks for the voluntary submission of the hearts and the minds and the limbs from the Muslims that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation in order for him to test us in order for him to see who's going to come to him voluntarily in submission and who's going to come to him involuntarily in submission ووصى بها إبراهيم وبنيه ويعقوب ويعقوب يا بنيا إن الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Of course, Ibrahim alayhi salam is the grandfather of Yaqub. ووصى بها إبراهيم وبنيه. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, before he died, he gave his وصية. And the وصية typically when a person is about to die or in the final stages of their lives. The only thing that comes to mind is that which is most significant to them. Everything else that is a distraction to them, that is insignificant, seems to escape the mind. And the only thing that remains in the mind of the person as they approach death is that which is most important to them. So each and every one of us should look at what is most important to us. Because that's what's going to resonate in our minds shortly before the soul part ways with the body. So here Ibrahim says, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَبَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ 
the children of Ibrahim are Ismail and Ishaq. And Ishaq is the father of Yaqub. Wa Yaqub. Wassla biha Ibrahim wa banihi wa Yaqubu. Ya baniya. Oh my children. Inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deen. In other words, this is not a wasiyah. This is not an advice. This is not words of wisdom that I'm inventing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this deen for you. So therefore, the best of advice that I can give you is to follow that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for you. It was not my choice. It was not the choice of my children or my forefathers. It was rather the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he chooses the best of the best for his slaves, for his uh, worshippers. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَبَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّا إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينِ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ if someone is to hear this ayah at its face value, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not die except in a state of Islam. You know, something may come to mind, well, death is not in your hands and mine. So how is it that Yaqub and Ibrahim السلام, would tell his offsprings do not die except in a state of submission? Death is not in our hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the latter part of Surah Luqman, إن الله عنده علم الغيب وينزل الغيب ويعلم ما في الأرحام وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إن الله عليم خبير. So this is the knowledge of the unknown among the many things that Allah سبحانه وتعالى narrated in this ayah is the place and the time of death. So here Yaqub عليه السلام and Ibrahim عليه السلام are telling their children do not part ways with Islam for a split second, not even for a moment. So death would not strike except that you are in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that you are in a state of Islam. أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ So here in the final moments of Yaqub alayhi salam, when he gathered his children and he said, who are you going to worship, you know, after me? Of course, each and every one of us who have children, and they know what's beneficial for them in this dunya and the hereafter. They want to share these benefits with their children because these are the ones that they, you know, they love most and they, they're concerned about most and they care for most. So here Yaqub wants to see, have that qurrat ayn, that which comforts the eye before he part ways with this dunya. قَالَ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي قَالُوا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ This tawheed al-uluhiyya. The oneness of Ilah. نَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقْ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا Now, we know that Yaqub is the son of Ishaq. And Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam. And Ishaq is the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why is Ismail mentioned here? قَالُوا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقْ So, Ismail is the uncle of Yaqub. He's not really his father, correct? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us just like the oneness of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one. The oneness of the millah is also one. So a family in Islam is a family of believing men and women. And we give that example with Nuh alayhi salam where he argues or he debates or he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for his son. He said, oh Allah, in nabni min ahli, said my son is from my family. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ And your promise is the truth. The second one is true. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the infinite truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكِ He is not a member of your family, the family of Tawheed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the reasoning, إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحِ This is a deed that is not righteous. This is a deed that is an evil deed to commit shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or disbelief in Him. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq as these are the fathers of the prophets and the messengers and they are one unit, one family, the family of Tawheed. أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي قَالُوا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيم وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاق إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Again, the name Islam is used, and you will see that throughout the Qur'an, that there is no other name that is given to the believers except the name of Islam. Those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala voluntarily, those who obey, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala infinitely, 
in all acts of obedience and acts of prohibitions. Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and elevate him and glorify him more than they love, elevate, or glorify any other entity. One other comment here, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءِ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ إِلَهَكَ وَإِلَهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا So it tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not change. He is the Almighty, He is the one and the only one. He is the one that's always been there and will always be there. So for the Israelites to claim that they are on a path of righteousness, and that they disbelieved in Muhammad وسلم, because what they had in their possession in terms of the remains of the Torah is sufficient for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that. Because he's teaching them is that the Millah of Tawheed dictates that whenever a prophet or a messenger part ways with his people and another one comes, you are worshipping one God. So you follow the next prophet. You follow the prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, the one and the only one. And then you ought to follow the second prophet, and the third, and the fourth, and the last prophet, which were all sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else. So how can you claim that you're in a state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you follow the Torah, and that you follow Musa alayhi salam, but, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a messenger who is not from what you perceive to be, from your lineage, from the lineage of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, how come you would defy him? even though his description is clearly mentioned in details in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So the oneness of submission comes at all times. By following all of the prophets and the messengers, by following all of the revelations and believing in them, which were perfected at the hands of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and perfected with the Qur'an and the Sunnah. هذا والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم سبحانك ما بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته